Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video, I'm going to show you one of, if not my favorite tip for debugging DAX inside of Power BI. So stay tuned. Before we begin, do you want to learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell 40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now on to our video. I've been writing DAX for a really, really long time, and I've got a couple little tips and tricks that I use when I'm writing DAX to help me understand what's going on, and they're just some of the go-tos. Now, you say, well, Mitchell, how much do you write DAX? If you don't know, I do virtual mentoring, one-on-one -on -one sessions with customers literally every day of the week, and I have for years. So I do a lot of DAX writing on different customer models, different situations all the time, and sometimes I just want a clearer picture of what's going on in the DAX so I can understand it and write better code. And so the trick that I'm gonna show you today is, well, let's jump over to Power BI and I'll show you. Now in a previous video in this series, I showed a little bit of a debugging tip for why sales by year right here wasn't working. And you'll notice right now, it's not working. It's not showing me the sales for the entire year. It's showing me the sales broken down by month. If you want to know how I solved that one, make sure to go back and check out that YouTube video. This is going to be, actually to, to, just to tell you, I actually go into the DAX query view, look at the actual code, and it kind of shows me where the mistake is. Now, I'm going to get rid of that one. And in this video, I want to take a look at something different. So I have for myself a rolling seven-day sales measure. Now, the seven-day sales is going to be a little bit odd here for a couple of reasons, right? One, it's a little bit odd because I'm at the month level. So if you didn't really wanna see this at the month level, you could just say, hey, I'm gonna write some kind of if condition. If I'm not filtered down to the day level directly, then return a blank, right? Like that, you might do something like that, but I'm okay with this because it's gonna allow us to kind of do what we need to do in this scenario. And if we read the code, let's read the code real quick and know what it's doing. All I'm doing is getting the very last date within the filter context. So if you're looking at January, I'm getting January 31st. If you're looking at February, I'm getting February 28th, March, March 31st. So I'm getting the very last day within the filter context. And then I'm using a series of nested functions to go back six days. Now, if you're like me, I don't know if you are or not, when I'm writing these calculations, I always forget because sometimes you have to go back, you know, 12 months, you go back minus 11. And sometimes you have to go back for, you know, somebody's got to go back minus 12 or minus six days or minus seven. And I just always forget. So I don't know maybe if this calculation is working correct or not, right? I'll just leave it at that for a moment. But this is technically going back six days. And then if I include the days at seven, is it still six? I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. And then down here, I'm just doing a very basic calculate statement, right? I'm saying calculate total sales for all of the days that are in this filter that I defined. And the filter that I'm going to define is going to be um, all the dates from the date table that are between the start date and the end date that I pass in right here, right? So get all the days from the date table that's between that start date and that end date. Now, there are a couple ways to debug this. One way to debug this for this situation, there's an easier way than what I want to cover in this video, so I'll show that first. One way to debug this is simply we're using variables. So just display the variable in the code or in the visual instead of the result, right? I always start with variables. I always show my variables first, make sure, verify, validate that it's what I want. So I can come in here and say, all right, show me what the start date is. And then I can do an ampersand sign and say, also, let's just concatenate that with the ending date so I can see both of them side by side. And I'm gonna highlight all the other code here. I'm gonna hit control forward slash on my keyboard to comment that code out. And then I can hit enter real quick here. And when I hit enter, what you'll see down here is I'm able to see all of the days that have been defined, that range of the start date and the end date within the filter context. These are gonna be the exact dates that I pass in to the dates between functions. So this is awesome. This is a great way to debug your code. This is a great way to get some insight into, did I go back six days or should I add another day? Now, if I'm not really good at math and I run out of fingers, this might not work. So there's another way to do it, especially when you're working with a bigger range of days. But this is great, this is great. This is not, I mean, this is absolutely one of my go-tos for debugging, of course. Variables are awesome for this, but that's not the trick I wanted to show you today. What I wanted to show you in this video today is my favorite function, or it's at least in the family of my favorite functions, 
and that is going to be concatenate x. And what concatenate x allows us to do is it allows us to take a table of results and turn it into a scalar value that I can now return into my visual. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get rid of these variables real quick. And so we have this calculation and the calculation is maybe not returning what we thought it should. And this could be a scenario that's way more complex than what I'm sharing with you right now this moment, right? This is a rather simple and basic calculation if we're being honest, but I'm gonna be able to show you the point regardless. And so if I uncomment this code, and then let's say that I comment out only this part right here, and then I'll just move this down a tad bit here. And if you know anything about Power BI and DAX, you know that this dates between returns a table, right? It returns a table. So if I hit enter right now, just to kind of see what's being returned by that table, I'm going to get an error message. That's expected. I can't return a table of results where a single value is expected. And this is really one of the main cruxes, if you will, of Power BI and writing DAX is you're like, I'm trying to build a more complex DAX scenario. I'm writing visual, you know, these virtual tables that are doing some filtering. I'm changing filter context. I'm doing a lot of stuff. And the results that I get at the end are not quite exactly what I expected. Is there a way to visualize what that virtual table is doing? The answer is yes, of course there is, with concatenate x. That's why I love this function. Now you've probably seen concatenate x if you've been around a while, used for a lot of really cool applications. Uh, maybe creating a measure that displays everything that's been selected in a filter or what have you. But I'm gonna show you how to debug, all right? So here it is, it's like every other x function. I'm gonna type out concatenate x. The first thing that we're gonna pass into an x function is going to be a table. In this case, it's a virtual table. It's a table that we've, you know, it's gonna be all of the dates from the date table. Just the date column, that's all we're defining here, but it's gonna be um, all the dates from this filter context from the date table, right? And what I wanna see is what are the exact days that are being returned from the date table, the exact days, and put in a scalar value so I can visualize it. So we've passed in our table, that's the first parameter of any X function, the table or table expression. And then I tell it what I actually wanna return. And so what I want to return is I wanna return the date column from the date table. That's what I wanna return. Now, I expect it to return more than one day on every row. I expect it to return seven days. That's what I'm going for, seven days, right? So I'm actually going to put a delimiter in here so that when it returns multiple days, they're kind of spaced out a little bit. So we're gonna say uh, comma, and then we'll put a delimiter in here. And the delimiter I wanna add is gonna be a comma space. And then I'm gonna close that out. So now I've taken a dates between function that returns a table expression and I've put it inside of a concatenate X so that it's a scalar value that we can take a look at. So I'm going to hit enter on that and look at this. This is beautiful. All right, so let me show you what this is doing real quick. On this very first row, it's showing me every single day that's getting returned from the date table using the dates between function with the start date and the end date that we passed in. So we can see January 26th all the way through January 31st. Now I can add, I can add those up. Right, this is supposed to be a rolling seven day cells, but if I add those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's actually only six days. So now I'm like, oh, whoops, I need to go back minus seven days. My calculation is wrong. But this is really awesome. I cannot stress how awesome this is. It's really, really cool because it shows me in a situation like this where I have January, I'm like, wait, what's seven, what six days or seven days is this returning for? or there's situations that are more complex where you can really leverage this concatenate X function over that filter function that you're doing, over that calculate table, over that summarize. I've had to do it a lot of times in that situation. So anyway, without further ado, we now have the knowledge that we need to fix this calculation. So I'm gonna go back up to the top. I'm gonna change this to minus seven instead of minus six, and then I'm gonna hit enter, and I expect there to be seven days here, and there are. I'm gonna count though, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One of my favorite tips and tricks inside of DAX, use concatenate X, of course use variables, and then go back and check out my last video on how to take advantage of the DAX query view to maybe get a little bit more insight into what's going on with your DAX code. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.